We have a big flare player, some fast solar wind, and a solar storm launch that might be partly Earth directed. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is getting very exciting. We have hardly calmed down from a big solar storm and we've got another one to show you. As we take a look at the first frontside disk, you can see region 2965 continues to be a big flare player. It's been firing off like little paparazzi bulbs, uh, big M-class flares. They haven't been firing any solar storms, but you know, we're kind of keeping an eye on it. Not sure we're gonna see much from it. But if you look just to the east of it, region 2967, whoosh, did you see that? It launches off a solar storm and this one looks Looks like it could be partly Earth directed. Early models are giving us an idea that we could get hit sometime around late on the 19th into the 20th, but we're still waiting to refine those uh, models as of yet, so hold on to your hats. But Aurora photographers, you might be in for another little bit of a show, if you could believe that or not. Meanwhile, if we miss that, we do have a finger light coronal hole. That's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here, probably within the next uh, maybe five days or so, and that's definitely going to bring us some fast solar wind, and that does mean more more aurora chances for aurora photographers. So this is good news for you guys. Now, as we take a look at our far-sighted sun, this is stereo A and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. You can see there are a couple new regions being uh, rotating into or, um, into stereo's view. They'll be rotating into earth view in a few days. That means we're gonna continue to boost that solar flux and keep it in the triple digits. And that's great news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders, because that means radio propagation on earth's uh, day side will remain in the good range. Now switching to our prediction model Enlil, this is NASA's version of the model and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And as we take a look, you can see that solar storm being launched. It looks like it's launched a bit to the east of Earth, but indeed the flank of this structure looks like it's going to hit Earth right around late on the 19th and early into the 20th. This means we could see a little bit of aurora. We'll definitely see it at high latitudes, but aurora photographers, even at mid-latitudes, you know, the Earth's shield has been pretty rattled lately with everything going on, so we could conceivably see a little bit more aurora, and that will set us up nicely for when that fast solar wind hits in about three days. Switching to our moon, we are passing through the full moon phase and we're going to be on our way to a third quarter. And by the 23rd, the moon will still be about 58% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, I don't know, maybe like some aurora, you're going to have this bright uh, companion to deal with. So you need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that solar storm that was launched on the 16th. Now this is gonna be a glancing blow, so we're not expecting all that much, except for the fact that it could come maybe just a little bit ahead or maybe even a little bit behind that fast solar wind that's planning to hit us here in the next few days. So NOAA is expecting uh, active conditions with up to about a 35% chance of a major storm. Now mid-latitudes, we're really only expecting unsettled conditions, but you know, we could have up to about 10% chance of a minor storm. It's really kind of hard to tell. It all depends upon whether or not this solar storm it grazes us at all, grazes us early before that fast solar wind hits us or grazes us after the fast solar wind hits us. So it's a little bit of a squishy forecast for you this week, but Aurora photographers, nonetheless, even at mid latitude, you do get a small chance for Aurora, but only if you're dedicated should you chase. Uh, this one might be a little bit on the, uh, you know, dim side. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have a few active regions on the Earth-facing disk this week. One of them indeed is a big flare player, and that's region 2965. As a matter of fact, NOAA's giving us about a 15% chance of M-class flares over the next few days, and this will probably last through the rest of the week as this region begins to rotate off of the west limb. That also means that we're getting a kind of a bit of a risk for radiation storms, because as that region rotates to the west limb, the chance for radiation storms also increases. Meanwhile, though, we don't have much else other than just some bright regions. They're not really all that flare active, but they are boosting that solar flux. We are definitely staying in the triple digits, and with new regions rotating into Earth view probably over the next couple days, we're likely going to maintain that and stay in triple digits, which means uh, radio propagation on Earth's day side will stay in the green range, in the good range. So enjoy. Uh, also, because uh, we are 
are still climbing out of solar minimum. The cosmic ray flux is a little bit high. Plus we have that small risk for uh, a, a radiation storm. So just you frequent flyers, especially those who are an air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose. Just kind of pay attention uh, because we might get that additional risk with that, that radiation storm threat that we have right now over the rest of this week. And then after that, things should settle down. So the space weather this week is getting pretty exciting. We've already calmed down from a bit of a solar storm and my goodness, we might have yet another one. We had a, a solar storm that was launched a bit to the, to the east of Earth, but the nice thing is that that solar storm is actually coming right about the time that we're going to have some fast solar wind too. So it might come a little ahead, it might come a little bit behind, but nonetheless it should enhance the uh, aurora possibilities right around the 19th and into the 20th. So aurora photographers at high latitudes, you're definitely going to get a show. At mid latitudes, well, you know, maybe you should chase if you're dedicated, but there's going to be better, bigger ones than this, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't get too excited. Meanwhile, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you guys are in good luck because uh, we're continuing to stay in the triple digits when it comes to solar flux. This means radio propagation on Earth's day side is in the good range. Now we are getting some uh, radio blackouts, just little teeny tiny ones. They're not really all that intense, but uh, so that might cause a bit of noise on the bands. And you GPS users, well, you're the ones who are really kind of dealing with that right now, especially if you're near dawn or near dusk. Your, your GPS reception may be a little bit unreliable. So just keep that in mind. And if we end up getting some uh, aurora from that solar storm right around the 19th and into the 20th, also know to stay away from aurora on Earth's night side. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.